I'm John Giever for MedPage Today at the American College of Gastroenterology meeting in Orlando. A hot topic at the meeting was endoscopic mucosal resection, or EMR, as an alternative to esophagectomy for patients with Barrett's esophagus that has progressed to high-grade dysplasia or beyond. The college brought together four renowned upper GI specialists, Drs. Walter Coyle, Ivan Romero, Joel Richter, and Patricia Raymond, for a panel discussion on two major presentations on EMR. One of the studies they reviewed described the long-term outcomes of EMR followed by photodynamic therapy in 135 patients treated at the Mayo Clinic for superficial adenocarcinoma, where both overall and recurrence-free survival were about 80% at five years. As we hear now from Dr. Richter from Temple University in Philadelphia, the data are encouraging, but perhaps not broadly applicable. And I think there's no doubt now with this type of approach, we can save a lot of people from having esophagectomies. Uh, the issue that I think is concerning that it has to be packaged is, again, it has to be done in places where there are probably esophageal centers of excellence. Because what you're going to need to be able to do this effectively, you're going to have to have skilled endoscopists that do this with frequency, skilled pathologists so that you're staging these tumors correctly and only doing this on the ones at the intramucosal, and in fact, you're still going to be giving your surgeon business because you're going to find as part of your EMR or as part of whatever technique that you're going to use that some of these patients, as uh, Yvonne's group has shown with the longer length and with the nodules, you're not going to be able to eradicate the tumors and you're still going to have to use, uh, have to do an esophagectomy. So great idea, wonderful in centers that have the skill set in all three of these areas, gastroenterologists pathologists and surgeons, but what it means really when you take this idea at these specialty centers and going out in the community, I think we're still going to have to be careful about That's at least my read on this. Dr. Romero, herself from Mayo but not involved with the study, pointed out that EMR isn't necessarily ideal even for patients who do get to a specialized center. If you choose, so let's say I have a T1A cancer, okay, I have Barrett's with a really early superficial cancer and I get my choice. I can get my esophagus out, um, be in Rochester once, have my follow up my local doctor for the rest of my life, or I can visit Ken Wang four times a year for the first two years, three times a year for the next two years, twice a year for the next two years, and then annually forever. Um, and so it is an average of and 16 visits for life. to the Mayo Clinic. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, now there's a, but, but on the upside, you got to keep your esophagus. You keep swallowing like normal people. Um, but you're always wondering in the back of your mind, did I make the right decision? Did one little cell go into a lymph node and is it spreading while I'm enjoying my life? Versus the person who chose surgery, it's in a jar, right? So, so we have these huge educational discussions with our patients when they're at that crossroad. In the other major study presented on EMR, Doctors at the University of Chicago reported on patients treated solely with the EMR for complete Barrett's eradication in cases of high-grade dysplasia or intramucosal cancer. The treatment was successful in almost all cases in terms of eliminating the abnormal cells, but 29% of patients developed esophageal strictures. Dr. Romero expressed reservations, as did Dr. Coyle from the Scripps Clinic in San Diego. That's what We've been doing it on animals and pigs for about the last six years. And when you, Chris Gustel, Liz Rajan have been doing this for about six years now in, in pigs. When you take more than 50%, like a lawnmower, if you like shave off more than 50% of the Barrett's, they get terrible scars if you do it all at once. And so in animals, they've been doing it where they'll do like 33%, let the animal heal, come back to another 33%, let the animal heal, et cetera. And they're still having tremendous uh, stricture rates. So it's just a little bit of a surprise that they went right into humans um, at this other group. It's waxing. And, and, and you it's see waxing. that it's 29% with strictures. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised. I think for the average gastroenterologist to do EMR, complete removal of Barrett's being EMR, I think it's oh. technically very difficult, potentially dangerous. Dr. Raymond, who teaches at Eastern Virginia Medical School but is also a community-based practitioner, said she would not attempt EMR herself. Now, I would never do that in the community because you need to have enough patients. You need to have enough skills. There are a lot of things going on in gastroenterology now that you need to have 
enough background in to not to, to do it successfully. So I would be biopsying my patients with reflux to see if they have Barrett's and high grade dysplasia, and then I would send them to one of my friendly esophagologists who would then determine what is looking best in terms of our science right now, because science is changing so rapidly in this field. But the panelists all gave high marks to EMR as the way forward. Dr. Raymond again. It looks like a very good way to avoid in many patients that horrible, life-changing, pulling the, the stomach up into the chest procedure, which was truly the standard of care up till now, right, Joel? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we've changed from, from putting the patients through a pretty life-altering procedure to being able to handle it through an endoscope, which is a really big deal for a gastroenterologist. I'm John Giever, MedPage Today.